think that's what the, the, the average man really needs to struggle. And I've been saying this has been my message for a very long time in all realms. I've said for a very long time that life for the average man is going to get harder and harder. It's becoming more and more competitive. You need to find more and more ways to stand out and be unique. And the only way to really do those things, unfortunately, as a man, is to suffer. And that's one of the reasons I'm kind of glad that God put me in jail. Because if you look at anything that builds a man into a man, there's a degree of suffering. It's very hard to become a man and have a man who's uh, respected and has stories and is capable when he only had a nice life and nice experiences. It's usually the things that made you the best version of you are usually the worst things that happened to you. So the demons I carry from jail, the fact that I can't sleep, the fact that I can't sleep, I've had girls say to me, you can't sleep, you need to see a psychiatrist. And I said, absolutely not. I would be furious if a psychiatrist walked in here and took my demons from me. I don't care if they could fix me with a click, they're mine. And they were bestowed to me by God. And they are mine to deal with and they are mine to fix because that's how I become a better version of me. I would be furious if someone took them away from me. I'm glad I can't sleep. Good, I can train endlessly. That's why I'm bigger than I've ever been. I'll train every, I'm not going to waste a minute. But all the demons that have been given to me by God and all the problems that have been given to me by God are mine to fix. I would never ever allow anybody else to take them from me. I'd be furious. If a psychologist came in and said I could cure you, I'd say, no, thank you. I will cure myself. I don't care if it takes 10 years. I'll cure myself. That's my job. And I know that when that's done, I will be more mentally resilient than I ever would have been without jail. That's the whole point of it, right? So many men say, I want to be the man, but they don't want to suffer. They don't want to fight. And I don't understand why, because even if you look at a superhero movie, they tell you, even in superhero movies, they make it very clear. Batman's parents died. That's why he's Batman. All the bad things have to happen. There's no way to get there without the bad things. I get so many emails from people complaining about their bad things. and I don't have time to reply to any of them, but if I could, I'd say, good. Good luck. Congratulations. Off you go. Of course she broke your heart. Of course you're sad. Of course you miss her. She's with me now. That's life. That's part of it. That's the only way you're going to get to that level of resilience. You can't become the man any other way. So yeah, I, I, I thank God for everything bad that's ever happened to me and, and all the demons. And, I, and you decipher it and you work out the best way to deal with it and you internalize the good parts and you become a better and stronger and more resilient person for it. Mm-hmm. So I have to thank God for every single one of them. Particularly at lit risk is for the thing you just said. It's the masculine youth who are my fans. It's the 11 year olds, 12 year olds, 15 year olds, 16 year olds. They are the future of the world. They're the people you want to go and die in a ditch. They're the soldiers you need. Those are the people you need psyoped. You need them psyoped. You can't have a bunch of men who aren't psyoped. Mm-hmm. That's when you lose control of everything, when the men don't listen anymore. And they're all listening to me. And I'm teaching them things like God, religion, personal responsibility, accountability, discipline. And everyone's saying, well, why are they attacking Andrew for just telling the truth and making me go to the gym? Because when you have these things, when you have accountability and discipline and personal responsibility, you have a barrier, you have a parameter, you have a no, you have a limit. They don't want you to have a limit. None of the men are allowed limits. We must accept whatever we are given from our relationship with our woman, from the government, from our job. We're, we're just the slaves. We're, we're the backbone of the tax bracket. We just have to shut up and pay our taxes. As soon as we have limits, they have a problem. That's why they dislike the things I teach. What do I really say? What do I really teach young kids that's genuine dangerous? What do I say? Go to the gym, stick up for yourself. Stick up for yourself, go to the gym, you're allowed an opinion. Educate yourself, be smart, work hard. Believe in things. Believe in yourself. About men. They pretend they give a shit about men's mental health. But if you come along and actually advocate and tell men how to be happier. I've been a sad man and a happy man. I am a man. I know exactly how it feels on all ranges of emotion. And I'll be honest with you right now. When a man is sad, yeah, there is an inclination towards aggression. That's how we're born. That's how we're evolved. We're evolved with that inclination towards aggression. We need that to protect and provide. That's who we are. We need that bravery. But having a bunch of depressed, sad men who have no emotional control is dangerous for society. I say this all the time. They try and pretend that I'm somehow dangerous for society by telling men to stand up for themselves and be masculine. Absolutely not really not. When you tell a man to have no emotional control and be more feminine, that's a school shooter. A school shooter is not a man with masculine accountability. He's a man who's told, act how you feel all the time. Then he gets picked on for long enough, throw on some drugs on top his psychiatrist gave him, throw in a lack of a girlfriend, and he's had enough. That's where school shooting comes from. School shooting does not come from men being masculine. It comes from the absolute opposite of these things. And they know this. They know this very, very well. To fix society, we have to fix that at the most base level, the root level. I think America and most countries need more transparency and understanding of how things work. But when they're attacking the family unit, they're attacking all of these issues. Every issue you've just labeled all starts down, back down to the beginning. I really think the reason I would like to argue, and I don't know any of the statistics on this, in the 1950s, I'm sure there was prevalence of guns all around America, but there just wasn't the school shooting. Why? What was different? What was different in the years before that there is now? 
I think it's just because children obeyed their parents and their parents were a family and there was a degree of responsibility that was instilled inside of people and there's a degree of accountability and there also there was a degree Great of honor question. and pride. Great question. There's a degree of honor and pride. Yeah. I, I'll tell you something now. I bet in the 60s, 70s, whatever, in any country in the world, people didn't want to do dumb shit because the family would be known as criminals. The last name would be tarnished. Their son did this. You hear what their son did? There was a whole, there was a vested interest in all of it. Now you have a school shooter who's going to go out there, be a piece of shit and kill people, and then their parents are on TV. Well, yeah, he was failed by the system. They don't even feel any shame. It's unbelievable. If one of my children or someone close to me did something that heinous, I would be disgusted.